Hi, this is John Hansen, and in this short little video, I'm going to show you some tricks for building molecules in Spartan Student. Now, I assume that you've actually had a little bit of experience with Spartan Student um, and have maybe worked through the first couple of tutorials. Let me show you where you can find those. If you start up the Spartan program and you look at the top, you'll see that there's an activities uh, but a menu item and you can select tutorials there and it'll pop up a window and you can see for example number one the basics operations tutorial which uh, you can work through to learn some basic things about Spartan if you haven't already and uh, you might have noticed there was also under that a tutorial that was a Krillo night trial building an organic molecule so I assume you've worked through uh, those first two anyway and have or have some basic idea on how to build molecules in Spartan now, before I go on, uh, let me just point out that under the help menu, there's a Spartan student help, which has lots of useful information. Um, probably the one that's uh, most uh, important to point out is the Spartan student version five overview. That is essentially the whole manual uh, for Spartan student. You can see here it's 136 pages. I can scroll down to see the table of contents here. So operating things like mouse and keyboard operations, shortcuts, uh, everything under every menu and what it does, etc. So if you're looking for a detailed description of various uh, aspects of Spartan, uh, this is a good place to start. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, start building a molecule. And remember, we need to uh, use the new molecule button to get into our builder mode. There are two modes in Spartan. There's the builder mode, which is indicated by this plus sign right here. And then there's the view mode, which is this V which looks like this. We don't have anything to view right now. So, and, oh, we can't get into the build mode because essentially we have to create a new molecule. We had never made one. So now we're in the build mode. We're ready to build a molecule. And by default, it comes into the organic builder, which basically has all the atoms in their normal valencies. Um, and so for building most molecules, this is great. But I want to show you some, and hopefully you've done some of this. So I want to show you uh, building some things that might be a little bit trickier. So let's say that you wanted to build um, a ring. Well, you could go down and use the ring tool here. Notice that you've got three-membered rings, four-membered rings, five-membered rings. You have aromatic rings and a couple other uh, more complex aromatic ones that you can select from. So if you wanted to make cyclohexane, you could just sele select that and then click into the window and you've got cyclohexane. That's pretty straightforward. But what if you wanted to make cyclohexene? Cyclohexene has six carbon atoms in a ring, but it has a double bond between two of the carbons. Well, if you look under here, there is no cyclohexene. The closest we could get was cyclohexane, but we need to put in a double bond. So the way that we can do that is use up here this bonding tool. And the way that works is if you take any of these positions, which are sort of these uh, short little appendages coming off of here, which uh, normally would be replaced with hydrogens, and you click on the end of those, what that's done now is made a double bond between those two carbon atoms by deleting those two uh, extra valences. Now, the geometry isn't quite right. We know that double bonds should be planar and flat. So what you want to use is this uh, button that looks like an E for energy and a down arrow for minimize. And if you click on that now, I'm going to do it. I want you to watch the molecule here. Let me make it a little bigger. Um, you'll see that it changes pretty dramatically. Notice how that hydrogen flipped up and that one down to make a planar double bond there. So what the energy minimize button is really doing is it's something called molecular mechanics minimization. And what it does is the computer program sort of knows what the appropriate bond length should be for carbon-carbon single bonds, carbon-carbon double bonds, etc. It knows what typical bond angles should be. It also uh, can take into account uh, the repulsive and attractive columbic forces uh, between atoms and parts of the molecule. And it puts those all together and tries to come up with the best structure it can. It's a very quick method. You saw how quickly it came out. Um, it's not as accurate uh, as some other methods, and it also doesn't know anything about electrons, really. So it's just sort of a sort of a, like a fancy uh, molecular uh, modeling kit that you might have made out of physical sticks. Um, so 
That's one way to make cyclohexene then, to use that uh, bond key, which will make a bond there. Another way to do it would be to build it from scratch. So let's take a look at that. I'll close this molecule and won't we'll save it. And now I'm going to go make a new molecule. And this way I'm going to make it from scratch. So the first thing I might want to do is make the alkene. Now I could do that by using this seed sp2 carbon and putting a couple of those together. Or I could use the alkene, alkenyl group, and click on that. And you'll see I get the alkene directly. And then I could put on a bunch more carbon atoms. Let's see, I need a total of six, so I kind of bring them around in a row here. Let's see, there's six. Now, these two aren't bonded together, so how am I going to connect them? Oh, I'm going to use the bond tool. So there it is. Click on that valence and that valence. Now I've got a bond, but you can see that looks kind of funky. The hydrogens don't look like where they should be, etc. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll hit the E minimize key again. Whoop! Puts everything right in the right order, and that looks just like the one that we had built the other way. So you have a couple of different strategies for building molecules like this. Now, let me show you how to uh, delete atoms in building certain structures. This isn't too uh, difficult. Uh, let's say that we wanted to start with acetic acid and uh, make the acetate ion. So I'm going to build acetic acid. So acetic acid has a CH3 and then a carboxylic acid group. So I'll go to the group menu here and I'll select carboxylic acid. And there it is, my carboxylic acid. That has a C double bond O and an OH on it. Now I could have done that by building it from these little uh, pieces right here, but it's a lot quicker to use the group. Now, again, I'll hit the E. This is sort of a habit you should get into whenever you build a molecule is hit the little E minimize and it'll just sort of straighten things out a little bit for you. Um, now, when you treat acetic acid with a base, it gets deprotonated on this oxygen atom. And so if you wanted to model that acetate ion, you need to get rid of that. So there's a button right here. This little uh, dot with the star around it is a delete button. And if we click on that, and click on this atom, it goes away, and there we have our acetate ion. And again, we can minimize that if we want, it distorts a little bit. Uh, these two bond lengths should probably be the same now. Uh, and so there's our acetate ion. So creating something that has less number of hydrogens or other atoms on it than uh, normal is pretty easy, but you just delete the extra ones. But what do you do if you want to put on more atoms than it normally has? So for example, uh, let me uh, delete this and let's uh, try some nitrogen compound. Um, so here I'm going to build it. I'm going to try a methylamine. So that's a CH3 and then it has an NH2 on it. So I use this nitrogen, build it there. So there's a CH3 NH2. Ah, it's great. Uh, amines are known to be bases. There's a lone pair here. They're not shown in a model like this. but uh, they can pick up a proton, and so we should have another proton there. So how do I get another proton on there? Well, you know, there's really no easy way in this builder to do it because there's no nitrogen with four bonds to it. Uh, so I'm sort of stuck. Now you might say, well, maybe I could put a carbon with four bonds. I'll just double click that. Notice how I was able to just double click on that atom and it replaced the one with the other. But of course, now that's carbon and not nitrogen, so that didn't really work. Um, so what you need to do is you need to go into the inorganic builder. And this gives you a lot of control over what kind of geometry you have. One easy way is, uh, you know, I've already got the right number of groups or, that I want on there for my nitrogen. But I just, it's now a carbon, so I wanted a nitrogen. This little uh, button right here lets you select any element in the periodic table. It's now oxygen. I'm going to select nitrogen. And now if I just double click on the atom, oh, it turns it into a nitrogen. So now I've got my methyl ammonium ion. That is where I've got an extra hydrogen on there. I can minimize that. And that wasn't too bad a way to do it. Of course, you could do it from scratch. Let me just show you that. Um, let's go back into our builder. We'll start with the organic builder and start with our methyl group. And now we'll put the nitrogen on it in the inorganic builder. Now notice this tab here has all the normal standard geometries that you might want around an atom. Now, if we're going to put a nitrogen with three hydrogens and then, of course, the methyl on, it'll be tetrahedral. So we'll select our tetrahedral shape. We've got the nitrogen atom, and we click on it. Oh, there it is, our nitrogen. We can minimize that. And that's the molecule that we had before, just built in a slightly different way. Um, 
you can actually select all sorts of weird things that might not be realistic, but you can build them. Let's delete this nitrogen. Let's say you wanted a nitrogen that was octahedral. Okay, that's not a problem. Just select the octahedral and put it on there. There's your octahedral nitrogen. Now, uh, not really very realistic. Why not? Because nitrogen is exceeding its octet here, and we don't really want to do that. But there's nothing wrong with building it. Uh, you can certainly build it. It's just that uh, it's maybe not chemically reasonable. Okay, so building hypervalent uh, atoms is pretty straightforward. And of course, you can you know put any atom in that you want in the periodic table. You can have any geometry you want around it. Um, and so basically, you can build anything. You can even change the, the bonding between things from a single bond. Let's say we wanted this to be a carbon-nitrogen double bond, since we're going hog wild here and doing crazy things. So I'll just double click on that. That's now a double bond. Watch what happens when I minimize. It'll get shorter because it's a double bond. Whoop, see how that sort of distance uh, shortened there. Um, for molecular mechanics, it actually uses this sort of information about whether it's a single or double bond. When we start doing our uh, sort of more uh, orbital-based calculations, uh, quantum mechanical calculations, it won't really care whether it's a double or a single. It's just going to minimize the electron arrangement uh, without any regard to what the kind of bonds are that we draw there. Okay. Um, one other thing that you might want to do is to build more than two uh, molecules at a time on the screen. Now that would be if like you wanted to look at hydrogen bonding or something like that. So let me show you how you can do that. Let's say that we wanted to look at methanol hydrogen bonding to another methanol. Well, um, there are two ways to get two molecules on the screen. One is to build a molecule that's sort of twice as big and cut it in half, or I'll show you another way where you can add a molecule. So let's try the, that first method. So I'm going to build methanol, uh, which is a methyl with an oxygen and an H on it. That's methanol. But I want two of them, so I'm going to sort of connect another one to it. Uh, this actually would be methyl peroxide, what I built here. So, But if I could chop it in half right there, then I would sort of have two methanols. And I can do that with this button right here, where it looks like a bond with an X through it. So we're going to break it. So we're going to select that. And then I'm going to click on that bond. And you know, it doesn't look like anything's changed. You can see the color changed a little bit. But those two guys are now separate bonds that just happen to be right on top of each other. And if I do the minimize, you'll watch it'll push them away. And so those molecules have separated. And oh, look, it's making a nice hydrogen bond. There's my OH hydrogen donating to that oxygen. And now I have two methanols there. So that's one way to get two or more molecules is build a big one and chop it into pieces. But maybe a more elegant or uh, intuitive way to do it is to start with one molecule. I just use my delete key um, to get rid of that other one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click. And to start a new molecule, all you have to do is double click somewhere else in the window. So if I double click here, now I've started a second molecule. And I can make that into a methanol very simply. And now, again, if I hit the energy minimize, oh, look, it went back to that same nice hydrogen bonding arrangement. So this is a good way if you're trying to look at intermolecular interactions. But normally, if you're looking at a bunch of molecules that you're comparing in a like A is reacting with B, you don't want them on the same screen because Spartan's going to treat them as if they're one big molecule. So in that case, uh, you want to build them separately. So for example, uh, if I want to build another molecule, so here I've got my methanol dimer, I'll call it, and I want to build another one, I can do it by clicking on this new button. And you see the first one went away. Uh, and I have a blank building screen, and I can build something else. So let's just buy, build methylamine here. I'll minimize that. There it is. All very good. But where did that first molecule go? Well, to find the first molecule, go out of the build mode, which is always sort of showing you the one molecule that you're active on, and go to the view mode. Um, and you'll see there's only one molecule shown. But down at the bottom of the window, there's two tabs, Spartan 1 and Spartan. And those names were just generated by the computer when we uh, made the new one. And if I go to Spartan, there's my methanol dimer, and there's my methylamine. They're actually in two completely separate files. And when I start to close them, I, it'll close one at a time. It'll ask for a file name for each one. And they're completely separate. And I can do all the operations that I want on one without affecting the other. Uh, that's pretty. That's fine, and that'll work for many things. But oftentimes, there's situations where you would like to do a similar calculation on lots of uh, or several molecules at the same time, 
and in addition you might want to do some calculations in a spreadsheet and so you want them kind of all together in what Spartan calls a list and so I'm going to show you how to generate molecules in a list so instead of using this new button uh, which if I go under the file is just new you can use new molecule if I click new molecule it goes into the build window it looks like the same thing that happened when I did new but now what it's doing is it's actually adding this molecule to the same list or it's kind of like the same workspace as the other one so let's do something different here let's put in butane so I'll put one two three four so there it is and now you say okay where is that I'm gonna go back to my view to see what I've got here um, and uh, I still only have one molecule and you're saying well where is it um, I still only have two tabs well I'm in the Spartan tab notice down here we have this kind of little player thing and now I can click on that and go between molecule and molecule in my list so there's my methanol dimer and I click over there and there's my butane my methylamine is sitting in a completely different file over here and notice that this is all grayed out because I only have one molecule in that list you can have lots of molecules in the list 50 100 you can even make little movies of them by jumping between not too useful in this case uh, but maybe later on you'll see some applications of that but you can put as many molecules in the list as you want and again to do that you say file and then new molecule okay um, I think that's probably enough for right now um, in ways to generate molecules. In uh, subsequent videos, we'll look at how to set up calculations to get energies, etc.